Welcome back, Dukes and Duquettes. Also, YouTube to the newcomers. It's Eddie at TV. I'm Eddie Ed, back with another Scary Fridays video. It's been a little bit. It's been a little bit since I did a Scary Fridays video, but we're back with the series, man. Get your popcorn ready, get your drinks ready, and make sure you have the lights off. Freddy. I, I don't know why I try to rhyme every time, but. Ooh, rhyming accidentally. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's get into the description. Oh uh, man, today's video is going to be pretty scary, okay? We have stories from different states, horror stories of haunted houses, and then we have a reaction, okay? Make sure you smash that like button if you like horror stories, okay? We're going to dive into one right now. And also subscribe if you're new. Uh, join the Dukes and Duquettes. Go to go to Eddie Ed TV on Instagram, Eddie Ed TV, and that's the channel name over there. I don't know why I said it like that, but you guys already know what to do. Follow me on Instagram, okay? Also, if you like gaming, go to the gaming channel, and we bust suds. We bust suds over at the gaming channel, okay? So let's go ahead and do that, all right? We have a video from from Mr. Nightmare, okay? Three animated true horror stories, but before that, we have a story from St. Louis, Missouri, okay, and some other spots. Let's hop straight into this video. It's Scary Fridays. We have a story from uh, the Lent Mansion in St. Louis, Missouri. The Lent Mansion in St. Louis, Missouri is known to be one of the most haunted places in America due to a tragic history that continues to haunt people today. The 30, the, the, <laughs> oh shoot. The 33 room home was built in the 1860s. See, that's why they, that's where they already messed up. Why is the house still standing in 1860s? That should have been done away with. Let's continue the story, man. By William Lemp, a successful brewery owner who ended up killing himself in 1904 after the youngest of his four sons, Frederick, died. Okay, I don't know why you're going to kill yourself after your... Well, I mean, he might have been close to the son. That's probably why he killed himself. But still, man, what about your other sons? You being, you, you, you being uh, biased over here, man. You got three whole other sons that need your love. But you're going to take yourself out because of one? I mean, that's, that's, that's love for that son. I can see how deep his love was. But, man, you got three others, man. Let's continue the story. I know I'm stopping a lot. Let's continue. This is scary. Um, <clears throat> a few years later... His wife also died of cancer in the house. Then in 1922, William Lemp Jr. shot himself in this in that same room. William Sir killed himself. Hold on, what's wrong with this family, man? Let me read this over. I don't know if I read this right. Then in 1922, William Lemp Jr. shot himself in the same room. William Sir killed himself. Oh man. The, this family is suicidal. This family is suicidal, guys. <clears throat> As if it weren't enough tragedy for one place. In 1949, Charles Lemp, William's third son, shot his dog in the basement of the home and then killed himself in his room. Oh, boy. The same year the house was sold and transformed into a boarding house. Where reporters, where reports of hauntings began. According to Destination America, witnesses have experienced burning sensations and slammings and slamming doors. Bro, today, the Lent Mansion is a restaurant and inn that also holds events. On Sunday nights, the inn haunts a murder mystery dinner. I said haunts, I meant hosts. My bad, guys. <laughs> Bro, all I gotta say about this so far is why? Why 
was the, was the family so suicidal and murderous? Yo, the, yo, I don't want to hear limp again. I don't want to hear limp. Say, I'm not going to St. Louis, Missouri. I'm not going to St. Louis, Missouri, man. I'm not going to. Jean Harlow, house in Los Angeles, California. <sighs> Los Angeles is one of the best destinations for haunted house hunting. Why is that known like that? Why are people going out into places just to go to haunted houses? Haunted house hunting? See? See? In his Bavarian style home, in this Bavarian style home, sorry, is, hold on, where am I? And this Bavarian style home in Beverly Hills has a particularly gruesome history. In 1932, it was home to the iconic Jean Harlow and her abusive husband, Paul Byrne, when he, when he shot himself in the head while standing in front of the mirror. Their butler discovered him and called MGM. What is this, MGM Studios? <clears throat> instead of the police. So there were tons of rumors that it wasn't actually suicide. Many suspected Ben's ex-girlfriend, a suspicion exacerbated by jumping off a boat to her death a couple days after. Jean moved out after his death, but died only a few years later at the age of 26. But wait, it gets creepier and 1963 celebrity hairstylist Jay Sebring brought, bought the home and lived there with his girlfriend Sharon Tate. Whoa, Sharon Tate. Until she left him for Roman. Why do you gotta add that in there? Until you left him for Roman Pol Polanski? Why does that got what what does that have to do with the horror of the story? See what they do? But anyway, let's continue. Um they were still friends and remained so until both of them were murdered by Charles Manson's cult. Tate was the same age as Harlow. But back to when the couple lived in the Harlow house, Tate told several friends of creepy occurrences in the home and even mentioned it in interviews. For example, once when she was sleeping in the master bedroom alone, she saw a creepy little man. Her friends say she believed it was Paul Byrne's ghost. She was so freaked out when she saw the alleged ghost that she ran out of the room and then saw a hanging shadow, shadowy corpse with its throat slit in the hallway. How do you see a, a, a hanging shadowy corpse? What, was this on the wall? Hold on, hold on. Where am I? There are also stories about two other people dying in the swimming pool over the years. <clears throat> okay, at this point, I don't know if this is hilarious or if it's scary, but this this sounds this sounds quite quite idiotic. <laughs> okay, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about this uh, these stories. Okay, now. Let's move on to the horror animated stories. Okay, let's go. I've been staying in my apartment in Jersey City during this coronavirus epidemic. My roommate has since gone home to Ohio to stay with her family during all of this. So I've been in the apartment alone. Mistake number one, man. Mistake number one. You've been in an apartment alone, right? I mean, I mean, you couldn't get your dog there. No pets. You stay in an apartment alone. Jersey City? Come on, brother. I've been mostly just watching new movies and shows. I try not to go out too much because my city is pretty bad right now. A couple days ago, I was running extremely low on food. So oh, you got to go out. Mandatory grocery run. Mandatory. I went to the nearby Trader Joe's wearing a mask and gloves, which, including the insane line and limited stock, turned out to be a production. On my walk home in the dark, 
I realized the streets were even quieter than they were the last time I went shopping. Bro, why are you going shopping at night? That is obviously the wrong time to go shopping, especially at this point in time. Any other time probably would have been a little... I don't know, but this this does not sound good. Bro, just a week before. Suddenly, out from an alleyway, some guy wearing a mask and gloves approached me. He had a baby wrapped in a hoodie and small blanket in his hands. He seemed very sincere and asking me to let him take his son to my apartment real quick so he could change his diaper and feed him his food. That's not a baby, son. He swore to me that he was clean and that he really needed this favor for just five minutes. That's a little man. That it was an emergency. Hearing the baby's little cries and the fact that this man even had a child with him and just seemed sincere, the soft part of me agreed. Bro, that's an actor, bro. It was only a short walk from there. We walked up the three stories to my apartment, and I let him inside, asking him to close the door behind him. That's where he gonna pull out a knife. The living room table for him to change his child's diaper and whatever. When I turned around, the man was like pacing around, or more like snooping around, I guess. He went into my kitchen to do God knows what. Bro, what are you doing? Hey, hey, you gotta change the kid and get up out of here. Matter, matter of fact, just get up out the door. Just go ahead and get up out the door, son. Where are, you, where are you going? Bro. Bro, this... What the heck? I called over to him that I set up the table for him to use. He didn't answer. I started getting confused. Yo, get your gun. I walked to the kitchen and saw him looking around suspiciously. And what else I saw confused me. The man was standing with what I thought was his child, held in only one hand. It took me a second to understand. It wasn't a child. It was just some baby doll wrapped up in a blanket. Bro, get your gun, your knife, your, your bat, and, and blast this guy up, son. Bro, squash his head. Are you serious? I told you it wasn't no baby. I actually said it was a little man, but it's but it's not even little. It's a doll. How did you not notice the whole time? I'm assuming one of those realistic ones that make the crying and moaning noises. The man looked at me and pulled out a gun from his right pocket. That's where things went from one to a hundred real quick. Of course. He looked at me with a gun aimed at me and said something along the lines of, I'm going to take what I want and you're going to stay in my sight. Of course, I had to say okay with a gun aimed at my head. I wondered if it could be a BB gun with a tip painted black. But even if it was, I doubted I could overpower him. Don't, don't try to find out. The man pulled out a big black bag from his backpack and filled it with valuables. They ain't taking all of My wallet, some of my roommate's jewelry, kitchen valuables, my Xbox, which he lent me, and my iPad. Wow. It was sickening to watch, but I was the most scared of him pulling the trigger of that gun. That's crazy. He held his bag and threw the fake baby in it as well. Then he left. I called the cops first thing. They came and helped me in contacting the building owner to see the CCTV footage from the halls. Of course, upon seeing the footage, it didn't help much. The man's face was covered by a mask, making it near impossible to even discover who he was. Wow. All I can do is urge everyone to be careful, not to trust anyone, and stay indoors until all this is over. What a perfect time to rob somebody, right? When everybody's masked. That's crazy. That that guy is smart that robbed, but at the same time, the guy that let him rob him or that brought him into his house. Yo, yo, he's he's messing up big time. I was taking a road trip in my Mustang from Texas to Arizona to visit my brothers. I usually keep emergency supplies in the trunk, such as water and tools. I was taking, I guess, what you would call a scenic back route because I liked flying at high speeds with the top down without worry of other cars or police. This was one of those completely deserted seeming roads with one lane on either side and nothing but desert sand, cacti, and shrubs as far as the eye can see. I was flying down this road when the car started to emit these concerning popping noises from under the hood and the car started to jolt or jump slightly. I put a heavy foot on the brakes to bring the car from a speeding 90 miles per hour to a less than gradual halt. I got out from the car popping the hood, pretending as if I'd even know what to expect or how I'd go about fixing it. There was no smoke, nothing like that. 
but I didn't have a clue what could be the problem. I got back in my car to try and start it. As I feared, the damn thing wouldn't even start back up now. Bro, why are you? One Ford Mustang. So yeah, it was an old car with a chair of problems. Bro, I would have rolled till it blew up. Naturally, I tried to call my roadside service company. They're not coming. That became worse. They're not coming, they son. Didn't have any service this far out in the desert. Bro, you you in a ditch. I was more or less stranded. I hadn't seen a single other car pass me that whole hour I was driving on that road. And I was scared to think how long it would take for someone to pass. You're done. I waited on the Do you have snacks? Sitting on my car's trunk from Hold on. The he at least got some water. Have some water. But he don't have no snacks. So you're going to be starving. You better try, you know, try to find some cacti. I know there's some part of that you could uh, uh, nibble on. I know there's some part. Find, find some cacti, bro. Some, some, uh... Hopefully you're on your uh, Survivor Man uh, knowledge so you can have some uh, uh, a nice desert salad. That, that's that's all that's left. Literally hours, sweating my ass off. My spirits rose when I saw the shine of a car reflecting the sunlight speeding down the road in the horizon. Ah. I hopped off my trunk and started walking and waving my arms out for help. But the car didn't stop. It zoomed past me. Pure evil. I didn't know how someone nah. could leave another human being stranded. They're like being that. smart, man. I could be a set. You could be the setup. Hunger was setting in. No cars had passed since the first, and I was trying to fill my stomach with the water bottles I had in my trunk. Eventually, I saw headlights approaching. I had my car's hazards on, but I also waved my arms once more. The truck pulled to the side, and a fairly large man stepped out. I told him my car broke down and asked if he knew anything about cars. He didn't immediately seem interested in my car. He more so seemed interested in asking me if I was alone, where I was going, and why I didn't just call for help. Then he asked me if anyone knew I was here. Bro, those are too specific, son. What the heck? Could you help me with my car or not, man? I ain't say nothing else. Could you help me with the car? That's all I'm asking you. He would ask him, are you alone? Alone? Does anybody know you're here? Did you, why did you call for it? Yo, he's trying to get him. These questions were certainly making me uncomfortable. That's weird. He finally offered me a ride. Though if he was trying to make a point of making me uncomfortable, he accomplished that. I stepped up into his pickup truck, and off we started driving. He said it would be a long while before either of us would have phone service. He started asking me more questions, like why I would decide to take a back route like this. Minutes in, the truck started to slow down, and I heard him mutter, ah, shit. He pulled onto the sand on the side of the road, looked at me, and said the piece of crap broke down. This couldn't be happening. I looked back at the man, and realized he was still looking at me. Like, five seconds went by, and he was just still staring at me. He finally asked me to go lift up the hood once he would crank the latch. I can only describe this whole situation so well, but through everything up until this point, I was insanely suspicious. He's trying to run you over. Truck with a bit of distance between the front and I, and waited to hear a click, meaning the truck's hood was unlatched. In my head, I was picturing him trying to run me over. Oh yeah. And that's exactly what happened. As I took one step towards the truck to try and open the hood, I heard the roar of the engine as the man was on the gas. I dove for my life. If I reacted half a second later, I'd have lost my legs or instantly been killed. Wow. I took off running into the pitch black night, looking back to see the taillights still there. And then this. Gunshots. Surely gunshots aimed at me. That man was trying to kill me. It was too dark out there for him to possibly shoot me dead without some kind of luck. But I thought I was going to die at any moment. What? I heard a truck speeding off in the distance. So I turned and saw the taillights of the truck slowly disappearing down the empty road. I eventually fell asleep on the side of the road, and the nightmare didn't end until early morning, when I woke up to another pickup truck passing by. I waved them down, covered in dirt and sand, and thank God this man was actually normal. <laughs> and his wife. They gave me water and drove me to the nearest town, where I was able to call the towing company. It was a 45-minute drive back to my car on that goddamned road. Then that same distance back to bring it into a shop. Long story short, this was the worst trip and experience of my life. That's crazy. Having someone try to run you over and then shoot at you isn't something you simply get over. Man, they try to kill him. They try to kill my guy. When I was 19, my 
friend Sean, who was a big goofball, came over to chill in our basement, as he often would during the summer. I remember he had a Coke bottle in his hand, and I was eating Wendy's, when he said we should check out that creepy little cemetery across town. It was the most random idea ever, and I even told him that. Still, we had no school the next day, and I knew exactly which cemetery he was talking about. I don't know if one should even call it a regular cemetery. It's just a small plot of land with maybe 100 tombstones at most. The tombstone's very archaic looking, and any time we'd pass, there would be no signs of anyone having come to visit within the last decade. The site probably dated back centuries, and it had this super creepy vibe to it because it was closed off by a gothic metal fence, and it was surrounded by woods on two sides, the road on one, and some old abandoned building on the other. Everything about it just gave scary vibes. It took a little persuading, but Sean managed to get me to want to check it out too. Ironically, it was a very cloudy, reddish kind of day. I guess conveniently adding to the mood. Sean pulled up his Honda to the side of the road. I told him to pull up more so it wasn't obvious. This was a low traffic road, so it would look kind of suspicious. He pulled up a few hundred feet down the road, and we got out and cut through the woods so that any potential passing traffic wouldn't see us entering the little cemetery. Hopping the fence in the woods was easy. It was maybe a three or four foot fence. Sean kind of took the lead on this since it was mainly his venture. He led us through the eerie little plot of land, and we looked at the archaic tombstones. They all seemed to be from the 19th century. The writing on some of them was illegible at that point. I know it sounds super dumb and cliche, but I couldn't help but feel like I was being watched constantly. I started looking around the surrounding woods. I told Sean how creepy this was. I know, he replied. Still, why are you guys there? Watched. I looked at the abandoned building hey, next to the bro. cemetery, at one of the windows. For a brief moment, I knew I saw someone standing at the window, even through the fog, smudge, and dirt on the glass. But they casually either ducked or walked away from the window. I told Sean we were being watched by someone in that building, and he turned to look at it as well. Then he went to look for the entrance to it. I told him don't. I said we should just leave before we get Bro, home. this is not the movies, man. You're gonna die if you go to that building. They're gonna get you and slice you up, man. Why are you trying to go check it out? Oh, let's go see what's who who's at the uh, window. Let's let's figure out if they, if somebody was really watching us. I'm not about to do that. Sean, you can go by yourself, man. Go by yourself, and if you don't make it, I'll let them know where you were. <laughs> like, but no, I'm not going to the building. I'm not trying to discover who was there or if anybody is there at all. If I think I saw somebody. That auto, that I'm automatically saying I really saw somebody. I, I'm not trying to, you know, prove it or nothing. Let's just get out of there, man. Go. I stayed still by the tombstone he was looking at while he walked around the building. See? At least he's smart. Man. He called me over, but I stayed put. Nope. Then I heard some loud kind of crack. So I looked in that direction, and there was this older man, probably around 55. Gray hair, had on a black raincoat, I believe he was wearing jeans, and he had a mustache, but that's all I really got of him. Then, he opened his mouth and screamed, not just yelled, he screamed, get out. He screamed it so loud, I thought I saw birds fly away from being startled. And just like that, I started to feel lightheaded, and suddenly everything went dark. The next thing I remember was waking up to being dragged in the woods. Out, thinking I was being kidnapped. But when I turned and got up, I saw it was just Sean. Sean was freaking out about something. He told me to follow him and run back to the car, so I didn't ask questions. As we ran through the woods, <laughs> yeah, why are you running like that? Behind me. And when I turned, I realized we were being followed by someone, so I ran even faster. We got to his Honda, and he basically put it in drive before the car even had a chance to fully start. When Sean was inside that abandoned building, he found a sigil of Baphomet painted on the wood floor, which is basically the sign of Satan. Around it were a bunch of freaky dolls with buttons for eyes. He didn't get to see anything else in the building, because he heard the old man scream at me outside. He came running to find me passed out on the floor, and he saw the old man slowly walking over to me. He started to drag me away from the old man and into the woods, 
He actually literally picked me up and threw me over the fence to get me out. Dang! I quickly came back to consciousness, and that's when we ran. I had only fainted one time in my life, and it was at that moment. I don't know why I fainted, but it happening at a graveyard with some kind of satanic ritual building right next to it makes it that much stranger. Hey, Mr. Nightmare, man. He's great at reading stories, man. Oh my gosh. That is just crazy. See, that's why I don't play like that, man. Why go to a cemetery to find something out that you don't want to you know, find? You know why? Almost be in danger, right? You know? <clears throat> that's crazy to me. I, I don't know why you would want to go to a cemetery. Of all places, a cemetery, though? Of all places, a cemetery. That's just wildy. Um, let me know what you guys thought about these stories. The ones that I read or, or the ones that we uh, viewed here on uh, Mr. Nightmare's channel. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, man. And if you want more Scary Fridays, drop that down in the comments below. I'll bring more Scary Fridays to the channel. It's nothing just to do it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, make sure you follow me on Instagram, Eddie at TV. Also go to the gaming channel if you like gaming, Eddie at Gaming. And yeah, let's get it rocking. Let's keep it popping. So the NTV. Catch you next Scary Friday. Bye.